Good morning, friends. Welcome to Word of God's OBE journal number 13. And uh, this morning, or this previous night, inspired by a re very recent documentary on the Canadian um, uh, artist and practicing theosophist, <laughs> Lauren Harris, who has been very well known in Canada uh, for, you know, in the art world and as a cultural icon for, oh, 50, 70 years at least. He passed, I believe, in the 1970s and was part of the uh, well-known uh, art group called the Group of Seven. Um, and is now getting more of an international reputation due to the interest of and the promotion of a touring show uh, by the uh, art curator and well-known uh, comedian and actor Steve Martin. Um, and uh, certainly we as Canadians hope this is successful because he, we think he's absolutely marvelous artist and the, the group that he belonged to also and if I don't know, as far as I'm concerned nothing short of uh, incredible fabulous all of them uh, uh, the group of seven you know A.Y. Jackson and uh, Tom Thompson and uh, Arthur McDonald uh, sorry if I don't remember all their names A.J. Casson um, inspired by that movie where the, I think it's called Where the Universe Ends or Where the Universe Sings. Um, sorry, I can't get the title quite right. Um, very good film. Um, I uh, remembered ha having followed his work on and off, oh, since the 1970s, have a couple of books on him, uh, thought to uh, contact him and uh, rem remembering, of course, that he had... Uh, absorbed the, the theosophical uh, philosophy, shall we say, uh, as early as 1910, you know. So understood uh, a great deal, at least theoretically, if you like. Um, we don't know quite what his daily practice was in terms of meditation, but I suspect he had one. Um, understood, the, uh, you know, the subtleties of a theosophical outlook. The, the uh, karma, reincarnation, transcendence, um, nirvana, um, the many planes to which one can uh, attend, um, the sort of things we talk about here all the time. So um, at some point uh, last night, between the, <laughs> you know midnight and 4 a.m., I've only been in bed about four hours, um, I attended to that particular curiosity. And uh, let me tell you what I discovered. I contacted some essence on uh, uh, declaring my intention. And uh, that essence recognized my projection and curiosity and said, well, I'm no longer really a being. I'm an energy essence most of the time. And as such, you know, I explore all the ramifications of uh, the vibratory patterns that uh, create the various levels of consciousness or if you like, on which the various levels of consciousness are sustained. And um, after he said that, or after the, you know, uh, being energy essence uttered, you know, those uh, thoughts, we're in silence together for a while. And I think there's a feeling of, uh, does he understand what I'm saying? And uh, we share a sort of meditative silence as I, uh, 
you know, I guess communicate my comfort with that, uh, you know, series of uh, statements. Then, uh, at my suggestion, my query um, about uh, relaying the uh, discoveries and um, explorations he has made in the world of pictorial art, painting, uh, and related art forms uh, to others. I said, I sense that he is a, at least a part-time teacher. And, you know, I say this because I've, you know, explored uh, on many previous, uh, uh, you know, astral travels at night, the, the art that has been produced by, you know, many uh, of the more famous modern artists who have since passed. And it's, you know, they all uh, are available somewhere. There are, many of them are still uh, recognizably being the personality that they were on, on Earth. Now, not all of them were uh, attuned to esoteric philosophy um, in, uh, as Lord Harris was. Um, there were some, as well known that Kandinsky and I believe Mondrian were uh, influenced by the Theosophical Movement and Philosophy. Kandinsky certainly was, and um, others, but uh, a lot, you know, I don't think Dolly was particularly, I don't think Picasso was, um, just to throw out a couple of examples. Um, so um, I asked that question in a sort of uh, knowledgeable curiosity, and he, uh, the energy essence, which seems to be a sphere of light, and I'm not, not a huge sphere of light, but uh, one, of a, one of a comfortable size, shall we say, uh, responds by saying, yes, I do descend and return to the, uh, sp the, the spirit and form uh, others would recognize as Lauren Harris, the painter. And uh, in that form, I do share a home or more than one dwelling, actually, with the, the woman whose uh, love I shared on earth. And uh, she is comfortable with this movement. He's, again, he's anticipating that question. Um, between an energy essence and a, a spirit, you know, a sort of astral being that is similar in form and personality structure to uh, the, the human she was on earth. And it's, it's, it was given in this movie that they were, they were, they were very much soulmates and uh, belonged together and uh, missed each other greatly when one, you know, one died before the other. So I'm not surprised to hear any of that. And um, needless to say, one of their homes is out in the near, near the Rocky Mountains um, or the astral version of the Rocky Mountains, which he, you know, painted. Um, so, uh, whew, I can't say faithfully, um, but uh, painted so well in his day. And uh, another one seems to be in a more sort of lush valley, a more elaborate sort of fancier home where you expect a, you know, a wealthy, well-known artist to live. He's catering to his reputation on that one. The one in the mountains seems more comfortable, cabin-like. He's showing me pictures of these. And uh, he uh, seems to be... Uh, the teacher role is accomplished on some sort of astral version of Toronto. And, uh, you know, close to a, a large grouping of people, a community. And I'm pretty sure it's uh, the astral version of Toronto. 
And as I've said before, there's actual versions of all, all the major cities. And I, I don't, I don't, you can't go looking for an astral version of any city around the world whose name you would know and not find it. They're, they're all there. That's all I can say. But I can't say I've been to every one of them because there's, there's too many. And they replicate each other's um, style, function, and um, appearance, you know. And they're all beautiful. Architectural. My goodness, they're fab. And, of course, there's cities that don't. That, that aren't replicating, you know, what's here. Obviously, the ones that replicate are um, um, s set up by, you know, those who wish to create a comfort zone and um, a cultural comfort zone, a com cultural, architectural, et cetera, et cetera. And, of course, the lack of uh, uh, limitations on funds and building materials and being able to do it with thought, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, makes for very, very uh, fabulously beautiful cities. Um, so uh, I think we've established that anyway. Um, but um, um, I'm not sure if we're doing this in real time in, in response to my, my, my uh, query, but he's, I'm being shown um, a, a sort of a mind movie. And it's very, uh, we, basically we walk into it you know, we appear in a mind movie as as actors, and uh, you know, on other. Uh, this is a very advanced soul. <laughs> Make no mistake. Um, he's not transcended completely, but he's he's up there, and uh, he knows how to manipulate thought structures and imagination, and um, the levels of vibration, uh, because he was thinking about this stuff when uh, when he was alive. And uh, practicing it, at least up here. And um, so we walk into a mind movie and become, you know, astral creatures in a mind movie. I myself, I believe, was a, in order to so, sort of get to the vibration level he was at, uh, I, was, I became something of an orb myself, which is, you know, another story, but not that hard to, uh, not that, that hard to do. And... Um, so we're in this mind movie and we're uh, entering uh, an art studio, large art studio in a, in a building and in a beautiful building. Um, sort of, I've, you know, I've seen these sort of things before, so my curiosity is, it's there, but it's, it's minimized. It's not a new experience for me. And um, there's the usual sort of art college bustle going about. And uh, nobody's bothering him or us and uh, we enter a large uh, high ceiling room with uh, a number of people uh, sitting waiting um, calmly patiently but there is a, an aura of uh, excited expectation as we enter people know we're there or he's there I'm, I mean I'm just who's that guy with, with him you know <laughs> um, and uh, I sit down at the side and he moves up to the front, you know, in a sort of in teacher mode. And um, there's a sort of a curtain that he opens up that's across a large screen. It's sort of about the size of a cinema screen. I mean, it's certainly taller than human height and um, as I say it sort of looks like a screen I'm not examining it closely but uh, that's the initial impression and um, it's obvious that this is part you know whatever of a series of lessons and um, When he begins, or what seems to begin, he sort of raises his arms like this. And when he does that, there's a sort of wash of uh, what's, what I would call indigo light floods the room sort of a, as a, a little wave, you know. And it's a greeting, and it's a very beautiful greeting. And it sort of washes through the room and dissipates. And... Um, you know, I'm not an artist. 
I'm not an accurate perceptor of colors and shades. So when I say indigo, you know, we're, we're talking, uh, you know, a neophyte talking about colors here. Um, and uh, after that, he, you know, he turns to the screen as opposed to the, uh, the audience and um, sort of uh, does that. And uh, something that looks like a very large painting appears. And it's a fairly traditional landscape. Now, I, when I say traditional, I don't mean how they did them in, in 1650. You know, a modern landscape. It, it looks to me more like the subtle uh, gradations and, and uh, textures of light through trees. And it reminds me a bit of Cezanne. Cezanne. And I'm not quite sure why that is. And again, this is just Gord's perception here. And I don't think I don't think he's there's not words going across here in, in, in the in the room or for me. There's words coming out of my mouth right now, but um, I'm describing a, 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 a silent scene. As I say, he did that a sort of an interesting um, aspect of a a thin, thinly forested landscape appears which i'm you know enjoying and appreciating and it seems it feels to me very much as though this is what they accomplished up until the last lesson and this is part whatever and it was you know just being held in abeyance until next lesson but behind the curtain as a as a thought form if you like and um It's obviously uh, a scene that you can sort of enter with your, your, your imagination or your mind. It's a beautiful sort of sunny forested scene, and, you know, not a forest where there's so much uh, growth that it's dark, but, you know, light and shade and various tender, subtle uh, variations in shade. The sort of thing, the more you look at the painting, the more you see the colors that have been used uh, the variety of colors and uh, the uh, the brush strokes etc etc and the little smudges and you know when you're in the gallery and you walk right up to the darn thing and stick your nose as close as you can without a guard hurrying over and saying sir you can't do that you know what, that sort of a situation and um, um, so the next thing that happens is um, you know again there's a few moments of uh, silent contemplation and uh, I, I'm gazing and I, I look around and I see the other uh, attendees gazing, focusing, enjoying and um, then what happens is uh, I watch as Lauren Harris walks into the painting. And I'm quite surprised by this. This is not something I've seen before. And um, the others follow calmly behind him. And I do too. And as we walk in to the image, like a large cinema screen sized image, like your average cineplex, not the biggest screen, not the smallest, a mid-sized screen, but it's way taller than we are and wider. And You know, you just sort of walk in. And as we walk in, it becomes uh, three-dimensional, at least three-dimensional reality. At least. I mean, I'm saying that because I suspect there's more dimensions that are going to get re revealed, uh, but you walk in. And as you walk in, it be as it becomes three-dimensional, you're walking through the forest. And I suppose we can use words like virtual reality and virtual reality headsets. Now, nobody's wearing a headset, but I think that the, the experience is similar. I haven't worn a 3D virtual reality headset, but I've seen films of them, you know, and it, I can see the approximate uh, comparison there. And um, so we're in um, a sunlit forested scene. Um, 
and uh, I'm part of a group that's standing uh, in front of Lauren Harris, who is now uh, working on the trunk of a tree. And so we're looking at the, the teacher, and he's using his hand, and he is, uh, is he saying anything? See, I can't tell if he's saying, maybe there's an, a, a telepathic contact has been established clearly between him and these students um, uh, previously. And maybe there is no need to actual, actually speak words and I'm being let in on a telepathic conversation. I'm not really tuned into what the, is actually being said, but I can see the results and I can feel the, the energy of the focus and concentration. So he's kind of with my hand here. He sort of, you know, and as he works, as he does this sort of a thing, the, uh, the texture and the various levels of bark and the various colors of that bark, as you, you know, run your hand over a tree, in certain trees, there's, you know, the bark is thick, textured, there's lumps, you know, there's, you know, and he's working on that inch by inch. And um, I hadn't noticed the tree before, you know, I can't say what it was like before, maybe it was one flat, you know, continuous shade, but he's putting in the details. And um, it's an old tree with lots of detail, shall we say. And um, everyone's watching very closely and uh, I don't hear any words. I hear a, I feel a murmur of, uh, you know, um, interest and anticipation. And I use the word murmur, you know, uh, loosely. And um, others are focused on the bark of the tree slightly more than I am. I'm trying to look at the whole scene so that I can convey it to you. And um, so we're in, in the forest and uh, it feels to me like we're creating a movie more than just a painting. Or not we, but he. And that this is uh, one of the astral art forms that cannot yet be replicated on Earth. But uh, the people who are attending are, um, are some kind of artists on Earth, maybe just... Uh, you know, Sunday hobbyists or, you know, whatever. Um, not necessarily well professionals or well-known in any way, but focused and uh, delighted and uh, committed, you know. And uh, they're extremely interested in this activity and has <laughs> nothing could draw them away from it. And um, you can tell they feel like, well, we, are we privileged to be able to do this. And um, so, you know, the, uh, the this hum of, of concentration and enjoyment is palpable. And uh, so he's working on the details, his kind of hands, you know, doing this kind of thing. Not really touching anything, but um, it's getting close, you know. And uh, various little... Um, Oh, what I would call little beams and flashes of light are coming out of the end of his fingers, you know. And um, as I say, I'm still not hearing uh, any kind of verbalized communication, but I think it's, it's telepathy. And it's not necessary for me to hear that. He's probably talking along like an art teacher would. And... Um, it's just not necessary for me to hear. And uh, I understand. Um, I'm not uh, any kind of graduated amateur artist, that's for sure. So um, I watched this for quite some time. And
How does he look? He looks like a young, handsome um, Lauren Harris, pictured when he's about 40 to 45. Um, that seems to be the form he's chosen for this uh, art uh, uh, lesson, and it uh, seems appropriate. People recognize it. And um, mm -hmm. now he's floating up. People are just watching. He floats up, just like you know, a standing human being floating up. And he goes to one of the lower branches and fingers the edge of a leaf very carefully. And um, seems to be working on it. Um, and of course, there's like any tree, there's lots of leaves. The other leaves seem um, there, but not distinct, not detailed. And um, I'm thinking, oh, is he going to work on every single leaf? And maybe he is, but not in the next five minutes. And um, so everyone seems to be focused on watching him work on this leaf. And he's doing stuff like this. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, the, the detail is um, startling and um, at a certain point he finishes working on this leaf I'm not, I'm not sure if what I'm, what I'm describing is uh, a second by second timeline or I'm getting a little bit of a rush job on this but he finishes that as he finishes that leaf and moves a hand slightly away and the, the elevated body moves backward a little bit. There's a little trick and the leaf starts to do, you know, does this little wave in the breeze thing. Very nice. Just exactly the way it would do, you know, on a slightly breezed uh, afternoon here. And um, so he, he, he sort of stares at it admiringly. And um, the next thing that happens is... Uh, interesting and um, the 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 astral being the one that looks exactly like Lauren Harrison when he was about 40 floats toward the tree and disappears and merges with the trunk and disappears into it and everyone just sort of watches and um, waiting to see what will happen now, I think they've seen this before but um, uh, I'm not sure of the significance and nobody's explaining it to me. I guess people are assuming I understand. So we watch this and then we're just looking at the tree. And then after a certain amount of time, out, back, back out he comes with no apparent variation in his appearance or, you know, you know. And obviously he's been inside the trunk of the tree for seconds or minutes and we've observed that and I think the class has felt a vibratory interaction a telepathic interaction that I haven't I'm not keyed into that now what was going on in there was he creating the inside of the tree was he creating the uh, or co-creating the texture of the wood of the trunk the texture and the uh, actual form of the trunk. I'm not sure, and uh, even if I was sure, I'm not sure I'd even say it, because <laughs> I, I, it's a little beyond me at this point what actually happened in there. But something went on, and it might have been just uh, a, a bit of amusement for him, you know, looking at wood from the inside. I'm not sure. Um, so it comes back out and um, people are watching <clears throat> and then he moves away from us 
into, you know, just the, uh, uh, the depths of the dimension. And as we follow, uh, it feels as though we're walking on a, something that's like a, a path through a forest, um, but not a dense forest. There's plenty of room to move. We're not talking, uh, y you know, rainforest where there's so much undergrowth you can hardly move. Um, and, uh, but we're in a three-dimensional representation of a forest path. And it's, as I say, it's, it's quite wide. The, there's room for everyone. And um, everything seems quite real. Although there's a certain uh, generic uh, uh, sort of like generic trees, generic grass, generic soil, um, generic wildflowers that you sense are going to be worked on later in detail, in great detail. Um, I don't know this, I'm just sensing it. And um, we uh, follow, you know, as, as a... Uh, a group that is happy to be where it is, but not chattering like uh, people going to a party, but uh, a more sort of calm, appreciative, you know, you know sort of vibe. And um, I'm quite enthralled, to tell you the honest truth. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm an experienced astral being. It does... <laughs> Doesn't it takes quite a bit to get me enthralled, and um, uh, we uh, he we catch up to him at some point, and um, we're looking. Uh, we seem to be looking um, over the. Uh, we're at the precipice of a mm, a small valley. Let's shall we say, um, and uh, we look out over it. And it's um, it's like looking into a, a wooded valley, um, a sparsely wooded valley, not a complete carpeting of treetops. And um, there are certain features to be seen, small river, as opposed to a large majestic river. And um, Some birds, I can definitely see some birds, you know, doing what birds usually do here on earth. Some sitting, some darting about, you know, some, you know, gliding on a breeze. And um, I suspect there's animals down there too. I'm not seeing any. I'm thinking, oh, are there going to be, you know, deer whipping through? I always like to see deer. And um, I don't see any, but I sense they're, you know, in the woods. So, um, but again, there's a sort of a generic fuzzy look to it all, as though it's there in conception, but not in manifestation. It's ready to burst forth, as it were. And bit, I guess bit by bit, and this is a, a long project, creating a forested landscape is the words that appear into my mind. And so it is an act of uh, creation that appears to be painting to begin with. And I'm reminded of uh, all that I've experienced and known and witnessed in times gone by, obviously, of uh, the spirit beings, the, the elementals that are called devas in the esoteric tradition. The landscape devas, the devas that create landscape and did so uh, early on on the evolution of Earth planet. And uh, we can talk about that another time. Um, there's plenty written on that. And um, uh, so it's almost as if it's human beings, deceased human beings, interested, deeply interested in pictorial art, learning to um, move from the creation of pictorial art into the three-dimensional creation of landscape. That's what I'm getting. So they're almost like they're training to become landscape devas. And uh, those words aren't used, but I'm giving that interpretation. 
and we just stand at the edge uh, and look down. And um, again, there's a telepathy going on here. I'm sure there is. And uh, people are very sort of enjoying it and focused and uh, mm, satisfied, I guess. And uh, they see the potential for, you know, the next lesson. And they see the, uh, the great distance that they will be traveling with Lauren Harris to complete this particular project. And um, this sort of thing goes on for a while. And then we begin to walk away from the, the edge of the hill and back into the forest and back out of the painting, quote unquote painting, into the uh, classroom. And uh, everyone re resumes their old position. And again, I'm not, uh, this is being compressed for the benefit of this particular little talk. And um, at the end of the class, he, oh yeah, there's another, um, and it's uh, a fond farewell sort of thing. And uh, the, what's the, uh, the color of the wave of the textured wave seems to be a sort of a cloud of pale lemony yellow to me. And um, it's uh, very warm and uh, affectionate in its composition, in its texture. And uh, people just sort of get up and walk out. And um, the astral being of Lauren Harris walks over to where I'm sitting and uh, smiles. And his smile says, without words, uh, well, I hope that was uh, useful to you for your uh, project, your own project. And um, I said, you know, I said it, it, it was and is, and uh, I'll do my best to communicate it. And uh, I mentioned the movie. I'm quite excited to tell him about the movie. And he goes, ah, uh, oh, yes, I was uh, hovering about while they were working on that. And he said, uh, the actor that portrayed him, it was a, you know, a documentary with uh, reenacted, you know, as he's walking around the mountains or up north in the, uh, the up northern Ontario, uh, in the forests and by the rivers and, and painting with his painting partners. And they represented that with an, an actor that looked exactly like Lauren Harris um, in, his, in his prime. And he said, I had fun uh, walking alongside the actor and, um, and uh, communicating with him on a, you know, with his spirit, but not with, with words. And uh, uh, mentioning, you know, the actual measure of his gates and the posture that he uh, had assumed and it, w it was very accurate he says he'd obviously watched uh, old footage of me and um, uh, had w worked on on postures and um, he said oh, you can't see me on the film but I'm there and uh, he sat with the uh, the director lady uh, whose name I never forget uh, my apologies but I did have a nice lovely conversation with her yesterday afternoon after the movie and um, a lovely uh, lovely uh, soul dedicated to the uh, the uh, not only the work of Lauren Harris but the uh, the great beauty of you know representational and abstract art as a as a, as a human endeavor and uh, um, had been very gratified at the audience's response to her film and um, uh, yeah, so he was aware of the creation of the film and he interacted uh, as, a, as a, a ghost spirit, if you like, with the various uh, uh, creative artists involved and the filming of it. And he said it was all great fun. He really enjoyed it. 
uh, to revisit his old self of whom he is he feels he has transcended uh, almost completely at this point and uh, he says well telepathically he's saying to me um transcended but not rejected um And he's fascinated with what might happen with uh, an internationally known figure like Steve Martin uh, getting his work farther afield than it has, has done up until now. And um, he's intrigued to see what level of <laughs> artistic fame he will reach in the next few Earth years. And uh, although he says he's very much uh, focused in enjoying his, uh, you know, post-mortem existence and doing what he does. And he said, he, uh, what I, I experienced there in the art class is only part of what he does. There's a lot more uh, traveling around as an energy essence without a form, understanding the uh, building blocks at, a, at an atomic and a subatomic level of matter. And he said, that's a whole other story. And uh, yeah, I go, yeah, yes, Lord, I understand. And maybe we'll approach that another time. Um, and uh, I ask a quick question about interaction with other artists. Um, and he said, oh, of course, yes, we interact with a lot. And uh, he, you know, mentions you know all the group of seven lads and emily carr of course and um uh, uh some other uh, 20th century artist that he uh, knew uh, duchamp marcel duchamp certainly being one of them and uh <laughs> as a follower of duchamp i ask a quick question and he says Oh, he's more, he's even more enigmatic than he was when he was on earth. I said, he says, sometimes you can't even find him. He's uh, too busy not being busy and doesn't want, you know, has this, uh, don't want to be Marcel Duchamp today thing going. Um, but, he, you know, they do interact from time to time. And um, uh, he throws a bunch of names at me, all of which you'd recognize, you know. Uh, the, uh, express, the sort of abstract expressionists of the New York School. He certainly interacts with them, um, appreciates their work. And um, shows me mentally an image of uh, abstract paintings that he works on, you know, an extension of the abstractions that he was doing in the latter part of Lauren Harris's life. And um, he shows me how he's developed or a, a, a technique has been developed. So an abstract painting will rise up off the wall and float around the room uh, w with its form intact and its colors intact, but it will float around the room like a three-dimensional object. And, um, you know, in a gentle waving kind of way while people sit back and watch. And then it will turn itself around, you know, so you see all sides of it and all, uh, so it's a bit like a sculpture twirling around in space in front of you. But but it is actually a painting that has come come to life off a wall and floated around. And it, I, I think I'd seen this sort of thing before, but I, I had, uh, had to be jerked into remembering having seen it. So um, that is uh, another advance in art, in creative uh, art, that one can see on the astral plane, experience, participate in, etc. And again, it's all this very much three-dimensional, you know, the flat surface beco becoming three-dimensional. Um, there seems to be an awful lot of that going on. And I'm sure there's lots more, but um, that's... Uh, uh, enough for today and um, 
uh, I explain uh, yeah, a little bit of my project to Lauren and uh, he uh, thanks me for my interest and I, I obviously thank him even more for making himself available and um, wish him well and all his, you know, his endeavors and, uh, you know, there's much smiling and, uh, you know, to and froing of, of good energy. And uh, I, I take my leave and uh, go on to other astral stuff that I did last night that I haven't got time to talk about now. Anyway, it's, uh, you can see from the progression of these uh, journals that there's just not enough time. If I describe everything uh, that Gordon's been up to when he's out of body, I'd have to give you like five lines on everything. So you just sort of get the headlines. And I'm not sure that how uh, conducive to uh, uh, creative curiosity that, that would be. And uh, if you feel a little frustrated with that, I apologize. And uh, I, I will work with it with that limitation as best I can uh, over the next uh, whatever few weeks. And uh, uh, I ask for your uh, tolerance and understanding on these matters. And also, I wish you well. Until next time. <clears throat>